All right, this is show number, this is JPEG to Raw, show number 48 with Stacy Jensen. This is JPEG to Raw podcast. We broadcast weekly uh, live here on our, on our website and on YouTube. You can find us on YouTube, on Stitcher, on iTunes, on Beyond Pod, whatever you want to use. I use my phone and get it off of Beyond Pod. We're also on Facebook. And Tim, I don't know if you've seen Facebook lately, but it has exploded. It's exploding. It yes, I've exploding. noticed. A lot, of good, um, a lot of good information going on in our Facebook group. If you're not a member already, just go to Facebook and search for JPEG to Raw. We also have a page where we do a lot of our announcements on the show. Um, J- it's also called JPEG to Raw. And then our website, you can find us on JPEG to Raw. And I'm still working on a new one. It's not going to be some big fancy thing. It's just a better organization, and it's the actual word JPEG to Raw. Um, there's a story behind why Nav Studio is the current name. And if you have any comments, you know, about the show, you send them to podcast at jpegdaraw.com. And we've gotten uh, several people who sent us, you know, requests on, can you find this guest? You know, can you get this guest on the show, this person on the show? And some of those we're working on. We, sorry. I think we got a little bit of feedback there. But we, we're working on some of those, and we're coming to the close of what I'm thinking of, as Tim, is like the summer season. We're coming to the close of summer season. I think we have most of August booked. And we're, I'm starting to get ready to book the uh, fall season and, and starting on that. So we have some interesting guests coming. We have a great guest tonight that has been a, um, in, involved in a show for quite some time and written a number of articles for the, sh- for the show. And we'll go over a couple of those maybe later on. But before we get into that, I got a special guest tonight for the first part of the show, Jim Collison from the Average Guy podcast. Hey, Jim, Mike Howard. Good. I'm doing well. How are you? Doing great. Good to be on your podcast. Yeah, this is the first time, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, I, yeah. You know, I've kind of been lurking in the background, always wishing, because you guys have a really cool podcast here, always wishing I was a photographer, but I'm just not. So, but here I am. Yeah, well, we're glad to have you. And Jim is here tonight because um, we're doing a special combined giveaway with Jim. Jim has, has, got, has, has, has some great contacts, has a contact at Drobo, who was able to help us get a Drobo. And Jim's going to tell us in a second what a Drobo is. He, they helped us get a Drobo that we're going to give away to, um, you know, a lucky winner. And, and we're selling it. We're not selling it. We're advertising it through both of our sites. Both of our um, podcasts are putting it out there. Jim has it on his page, on his Facebook page. We have it on ours. And Jim is the knowledgeable guy about, about the Drobo. And I think, you know, while it's a tech thing, um, photographers, that's really, really important. I have stressed that here, and probably people are sick of hearing me say it, but you won't be sick of hearing me say it the first time you actually need it. You'll be thanking me for it. And if I, if I had the time and the money, I would come out to everybody's house and install it and set it up for you, but I you know, don't have the time or the money. But the Drobo is a great, um, a great solution. It's, it's a little expensive, although in this case it's free. Um, very free. Very free. Although in this case, it's free. Uh, we're, we're getting a little feedback again. If you're listening to the, um, we're getting a little feedback again. Kaylee, listening to the, um, a little feedback again. We lost somebody. And Jim, we lost Jim, I think. Oh, we lost Jim. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep talking about the Drobo, and we'll see if he comes back in. <laughs> the Drobo, the beauty of a Drobo. Uh, Stacy or uh, Kaylee, yeah. do y'all know anything about a Drobo? I don't. I saw your fun little post today, but I'd love to learn. Would a, a, I haven't would, really. Okay. I don't know much about it. Should I say? What a what a Drobo is in this case, it's a box that holds four drives. And, and, and Mike, actually, yeah. in this case, this is a Drobo five bay. And wow. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, holy moly. Up to five drives uh, you can put in there. It'll support any of the newer drives, so uh, any uh, up to four terabytes at this point of data. You can build a volume up to 16 terabytes, so you stack the drives in one at a time. You can start with well, that's, one. That's it right there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to key on you, Jim. Yeah, yeah. Let's, it's, it's right here. And, and if you look at this, you just pull the cover off. It's, it's kind of far away. Hopefully you can see it. But... Each of these lights represents one drive that I have in here, and I currently have a two terabyte drive here and two 1.5 terabyte drives that are in there. And it creates roughly about three and a half terabytes of storage between the, the three drives. What it does is it protects the data that's in there that any one of these drives could go out, and I wouldn't lose any data that's on there. You can also, with the Vive Bay, you can set it to double redundancy. Two drives can go at a time, which is almost impossible, right? I mean, it just... Yeah. 
from a technology standpoint, that just doesn't happen very often. But if two drives did go, you could pull them both out and replace them and not lose any data that's on there. And so you can, as you, you can, the nice thing about this and whoever the lucky winner of this, you can start with just two drives for data protection and then build as you go. And you don't have to do anything special when you're adding this to your, to your network or to your PC. You just put another drive in and the Drobo automatically adds that to the storage array. And through a nice little interface on your PC, it helps you manage the data that's in there. So be, be, because of that flexibility, it, it comes at a price. Uh, although this one, again, is free for, that we're giving it away. That thing usually retails for $800? This, this one in particular right now, I think you get for $599. They're, Drobo okay. is getting ready to... That's without actually, the drives in it. That's without the drives, yes. Yes, without that, the drives. That is true. Yeah, but you're paying yeah. for a unit that, uh, that, that protects your data. Yeah, and you know if if you're a photographer or anybody that stores stuff on a hard drive, this one right here has gone bad. Hard drives will go bad; they will die. And like Jim said, with that one, you can either go with single drive protection or double drive protection. So you lose one drive, you take it out, you put another one in, and it rebuilds it, and you don't lose anything. Or you um, can have where you can lose two of them. Now, once it loses one drive, once one drive goes bad, you you really need to stick another one in there. The well, other the the nice thing, though, Mike, is if a drive does go bad, this light right here goes from green to red. Yeah, and it so it tells you which one it is. starts flashing, and it says, hey, you need to replace this drive. So a pretty nice, uh, and, it, and it's a very well, it's, it's, it's nice. You could sit this on your counter, and, and even in your kitchen, and it would look, it would look nice there. <laughs> yeah. Right, not like my Windows Home Server. Uh, well, even that, my, Tim, could look nice if it was built well. You, you know, Always built well, but it's pretty big. I think my wife would have something to say if I put it on the kitchen counter. Yeah, Maybe she would so. probably be upset. Can I just kick everybody out of chat so I can win it? <laughs> We're not giving it away tonight. We're not giving it away tonight. Tonight yeah. is Stacy's giveaway. Not, not ours. <laughs> That's right. Um, but we, but we, we figured that a lot of people have not heard of a Drobo or don't really know what it is, so we wanted to give a little bit of an intro. The other beautiful thing that, that Jim was talking about there is normally with a device that has drive protection, it's normally called RAID, where if a one drive goes out, you can you're protected. Normally, you have to fill that thing up with whatever drive you want right from the beginning. So if you had five things like that, you would have to five, you would have to buy five drives right at the start, of whatever the maximum size you wanted. But with that one, as long as you buy two and put it in there, you're protected. Then later, when you have a little more money, you want to buy another drive, stick it in there, and they don't have to all be the same size. Nope, any size drives that you have. Yeah, if you, nice. Exactly, and you can just, you know, and then you can, you, as drives get cheaper, as they get larger, you can just buy a larger drive and put it in. And it'll also tell you, uh, it, say you have all five drives and you fill them up, which photographers do, right? Because you guys mm -hmm. take tons of pictures in RAW. Yeah, absolutely, and archive them. Yeah, that's absolutely. right. And you want to keep those around, right, for local storage. Yeah, so the, the, the smallest drive will flash yellow, which says, hey, you need to replace this drive with a larger nice. drive. Pop the cover, flip it out. I mean, literally, it's one. It's a one-button push. In this case, here, I'll just show you real quick. So you just pull the cover off, flip, flip that, and the drive comes right out, just That's like incredible. that. So the average guy, super easy for the average guy to do. Mm -hmm. and, and then it's going to say at this point, the light's going to start flashing and saying, uh-oh, I'm, I'm missing a drive now. I'm going to recover these. And it's going to take the data and put them, it's going to recover them so they're all back on these two drives until I replace it with another drive. Nice. Now, Jim, let's say that I am working in Lightroom and my files are on that, and, a, and you just did that. You pulled the drive out. Yeah. Well, it's still, still accessible. Working? Still Absolutely. working, just yep. like it never happened. Data never changes. It's, it's, it's wow. all still there. It's just now going, instead of it being a three-way RAID at this point or a three-way pr um, protection schema, it's now a mirror. And so it's adjusting itself to say, okay, now I need to stripe these two so all the data is on both of these drives. And it's going to rebuild that and probably take... At this point, it depends how much data you have, but you know, 30 minutes to uh, an hour or two. But you can still use the data, so you kind of just forget about it. It's going to recover itself, and a very simple solution for backup. And, and let me remind folks, too, right, any file should be stored in two locations. So sure. even though you have it on the data and it's on the Drobo and it would be protected, you'd still want that somewhere else because your house burns down, mm -hmm. the Drobo gets crushed by the big dog that you have, somebody eats the cord, Something Your like wife that. White throws it out the window because there you, you go. The counter. <laughs> right. <laughs> Food gets spilled on it. Something like that, right? Somebody yeah. jams a peanut butter jelly sandwich <laughs> in it. You. Uh, Into my house. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, mine too. I've had five. I know peanut butter and jelly sandwich in the VCR a couple times. Yeah. But yeah. So Mike, tell us. Um, tell us how. Tell folks how they win this thing. 
So on both Jim and our site, in, uh, we have a form you fill out that tells you what you need to do, and it's really, really simple on what you need to do. You need to do one, th one thing to enter, and that is like a JPEG to Raw's Facebook page and uh, the Average Guy's Facebook page. And both of the links, the links to both of those pages is in the, um, the form you got to fill out in the, uh, that, that blog post. So you would just go to jpegtoraw.com. Uh, there's a, a link there, menu choice, says Drobo Giveaway. Click on that and you fill out that form and, and then you're entered. You, you can get an extra entry by going and, and leaving, oh, I think you can actually get two extra entries, Jim. Mm -hmm. yeah. You leave a comment on iTunes about both of our podcasts. You go, you know, find Jim's. And there's, a, there's a link there that helps you find it too. And be find, nice. Find Jim's, <laughs> leave, leave a comment, you know, hopefully a nice comment. Leave a comment. Go to find JPEG to Raw. I would like it if you look. We have three feeds. We have audio, video, large, video, small. So it would be nice if you left it on. We consolidated everything to the audio. But that's still the one that most people listen to, even on iTunes. Um, leave a comment on there. And then the third way you can get an entry is to um, subscribe to both of our podcasts. On YouTube. And on YouTube, yes. It's one click. Just subscribe and you're done. And we, get, we both get an email that you've done that, and you get an extra entry. Yep, and uh, all this is really simple. The form has all the links for you on how to get there, uh, and you know, really simple. You can go to Jim's page, and and do that too, uh, no, or you can go to our page. Go to Mike's page, notstudios.com. Yeah, or right now, jpegtoraw.com gets you there too. Awesome. Well, Mike, I didn't want to burn a bunch of time. Folks came to listen to stuff about photography, and, and they came to hear Stacy, not Jim, drab, you know, go on and on about Adrobo. Actually, we'll be... that was some good photography advice, Jim. Oh, well, uh, well, Stacy <laughs> might want to have heard about it, too. So, yeah. Uh, we... Yeah. And, you know, I always get questions of uh, what's the best way to three time back up your uh, um, files? Because, you know, we all know that we have to have an external drive, we all have the computer, but do you put them on CDs. That takes a lot of time. So this is pretty genius for our type of industry. And especially for photographers where the files are large, right? Yeah. Both for video and audio, you know, 16 terabytes is pretty large. So you could get a lot of data on a 16 terabyte Drobo. Again, you would all not want it just there. You want that there and somewhere else. Sure. But from a working yeah. standpoint, great place to store it. So. And, and Stacy, I would caution against a backup strategy that is DVD or CDs because <laughs> the consumer brand that we buy Mm -hmm. uh, even if you buy the highest quality at the store, they won't last as long as you think they will. Right. You, you might get a five-year lifespan, and then when you go back to that disc a couple of years later, it's gone. Right. Yeah. So I keep so, it all on hard drives or on the, uh, on the cloud somewhere. Mm -hmm. And, Jim, you were, somebody asked how much is it if you don't win it. Uh, and this is, this is, all that flexibility comes, does come at a price. Uh, yeah. and it's, it is super simple, super easy to use, super powerful. But that one you're looking at there, which I think is USB 3.0 and eSATA. 3.0 and eSATA. Yeah, I think these are 5.99 right now. 5.99. Um, if you just go out to Drobo.com, you can look at the various versions they have. They actually have some newer versions coming out too that have mSATA, which is uh, like having an SSD drive. If you know what, solid state drive, super fast. Um, they have some solid state caching, which means you're going to get to your data even faster than you get to it now. Uh, off the Drobo, so yep. um, but but this would make a great I mean this would make a great uh, additional storage unit for somebody, especially a photographer. So um, go out. Uh, we'll give away on August 16th on my show. So Mike, um, the deadline to enter will be August 14th on at August the conclusion of your show. show. So, yep. And I'm echoing, so I'm going to go. All right, but, Jim. Thank um, you for coming on, Mike. Time. Thanks for having me, and uh, we'll see. Uh, I'll see you on Thursday on my show, eight o'clock central, theaverageguy.tv. See you there, Jim. Okay. Good night. Okay. All right. Um, uh, as exciting as that is, we have exciting news tonight because that's in the future. We have exciting news tonight. Stacy, you are giving away two $150 credits, right? Yes, to, to I any, am. To any of your products, excluding the mentoring thing because that, that does take up a lot of personal time. Right. That's um, definitely a lot of different editing and business tools. So, so we'll have two very lucky winners. Yeah. Tonight. Stacey has a lot of stuff out there. And what, the way we're going to do this is later in the show, toward the end of the show, we're going to pick somebody out of chat. So you've got some time to get logged in the chat if you're not already logged in. And we will, Stacy will pick a random number and I will uh, pick out who that is. As long as it's not, Kaylee, I'm sorry, you're, you're, um, you're not allowed <laughs> to win tonight. 
Yeah, I'm just so. glad you get to do the number this time, Mike. I always feel so bad when I have to pick the winner. <laughs> well, you're well, just picking a number. You're not I, I know, but I don't know how many are in the group. So thankfully, I just um. Well, I will tell you how many. I can't tell you to pick, you know, five, one through 500, and it's not that right. many people. <laughs> right. well, I will work right. that out. I wanted to blame it on you, Mike. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I could count wrong, so it could be my fault. <laughs> there you go. So, Stacy, uh, why don't you tell us a little about yourself and how you got into photography? Because you didn't get in. Um, I guess everybody has their own story, but you, sure. yours is a very interesting um, story, and some of the other things you've done too. Yeah, I kind of fell into this. So, um, I originally had decided that I, I really loved graphic design, and in when I was in the graphic design industry, um, I had to photograph the products of the company that I was working for. So, um, originally, when I was uh, photographing the products that wasn't very enjoyable but we also brought in models it was a dress company so I started um, taking the photographs and realized that was just everything that I enjoyed of the artistic side of what I do so in that uh, I kind of you know transitioned but the the time that I spent in graphic design and web design had really helped me to build um, my company today because I had that experience uh, marketing myself and knowing that it took some time and some research in this industry. So it you know it was a long process. I've been doing uh, this collectively with graphic and web design for about um, it's been over 13 years. So it you know it. I, I found my passion just through an accidental photograph of a product. But that background, again, that background of web and graphic design really helped me to come in here. Definitely. I think graphic design it, it really helps. It gives you that creative edge that not everybody has. But you also did some other things. You did programming. I, I don't tell me, I don't know if you know this. She did programming of computer databases. I did, I did. So I um, was brought over to Visteon first. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the automotive industry, but here in Detroit, so I live in Michigan, um, clearly the automotive industry is a big push. And uh, so I came in there hired as a graphic and web designer. The guy who hired me said, listen, this is going to be a six week project. Don't get excited. That's it. You're coming in, you're doing our website and you're leaving. So at six weeks, they said, you're not going anywhere. And I kind of am one of those, uh, uh, yes, I can do it. I'll, I'll try what I can. And so they, they knew and they appreciated that. Yes. And I think that goes for uh, photographers with our clients. It, yes, I can really goes a long way. So they knew I had a bit of computer background and I started designing their um, databases for their HR department and lived there for three years. So it was a six week contract that lasted, lasted three. three years. Mm -hmm. now, now, why didn't you continue the uh, computer programming? But unfortunately, this Dion, um, during two years ago, during the fall of the uh, manufacturing industry, just so happened to be one of those companies that needed to downsize. Mm -hmm. I, the funny, if not, or the funny, the funniest part of the story is I wrote the databases for them to let people go. And then, oh. <laughs> they said, oh, look, and then I in. ended up going. So I've got, you know, that, it's probably a tough area that whole the automotive industry has gone through some tough times. Absolutely. Um, and um, they were a split off from Ford. So they just did. Now you st are you still in that area? Um, no, I actually moved west of there. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I decided what was I going to do? Should I go back to my roots? I was previously before working at Vistian, I was a freelancer. I did my web and my graphic design and I was good at it. So I thought, what is the best way to feed my family? And it's clearly to be my own boss. And mm -hmm. I, I've always, you know, been an entrepreneur. Let's get this going. And, it, you know, it wasn't easy, but it, it, it was worth it. So. Yeah, I, I, I was saying that because I would think that it would be tough to be a photographer in the Michigan area during those times. That would have to be tough. Yeah, I mean, you know, who had during that time when, when there was no car sales, and it was almost very sad around here because in Michigan, when you live here and you drive down the expressway, there's always semis with lots and lots of cars on them um, traveling from one place to another, and the you didn't find that. You didn't find that often at all. You could tell we really were changing here in Michigan, but thankfully today it's booming again and, you know, houses are selling and cars are being sold. So thankfully I, you know, I'm here and, and surviving. Okay. So um, now what type of things do you photograph? 
uh, um, I love it mostly to photograph weddings and seniors. Um, you know, during my career, clearly I have taken on the whatever came at me, whatever built my portfolio, which is important at the beginning. But I try to today um, really ensure that I'm taking the jobs that I want to take to make sure that I'm following my passion and I want to do it every day. So it's probably mostly the seniors and the weddings. Okay. Okay. And you also have really branched out into the, um, the uh, actions. Now, is this, yeah. is it Photoshop actions, uh, Lightroom actions, or not actions, uh, presets, presets or, yep. or Photoshop elements? What, which one are you, are you keen on one all or doing three. all three of them? All three. Um, I will say that Lightroom um, less just because it, it doesn't allow me the creativity when I'm, when I'm designing them as it is with Photoshop and elements. We do have all three. I try to at least make sure that I am capturing everybody's needs. So, um, it, and that kind of went well with what I did. I was a graphic designer. So clearly during my career of editing as a graphic designer, I learned the recipes for editing. Um, at one point, I was a graphic designer for a magazine. So uh, there was a lot of work that was involved in the editing process of, of that stuff. So uh, building these actions is just kind of one of those other passions. I'm lucky every day. You know, um, I, my mom called me, and I'm, I'm just checking to make sure she wasn't out there listening. <laughs> <laughs> my, mom call, my, mom calls me, my mom calls me Sunday. If, you know, you, I don't know what's, what it is, but I have – most people would not describe me as a patient person, but I can be patient until it comes to my mom. <laughs> and she calls me and she wants help with an act, a Photoshop action. And she's used to do these all the time. I guess maybe she just forgot all about them. So she calls me up and says, how, you know, how do I do this? And I said, okay, that's easy. This will be, you know, five, 10 minutes. I'll walk you through how to set up an action, how to, you know, have it record and how to mm -hmm. uh, save your file out and, and do all that. An hour and a half later, I don't think we were done. <laughs> and now it, she's my competition. <laughs> no, no, she is not. <laughs> she, she, here's a, she takes great photos, and she does some great things with actions, but she likes to go out, and uh, she doesn't build too many of her own. She likes mm -hmm. to go out and get some like mm -hmm. yours, buy some like yours, buy some, you know, whatever that she likes, mm -hmm. because she doesn't want, she's done, she doesn't want to spend a ton of time editing. What she wants to do is spend her time taking the photos, Right. And she's going to take them what she wants, you know, how she wants. And then she's going to come back and she's going to use actions in some cases, not every case, right. but in some cases she's going to use actions to help her with that final step of the process. Mm -hmm. um, and, it's, you know, everybody has their own, their own taste and every photo, every action does not work on every photo. Correct. Um, but so I think I have some of your actions oh, loaded up here. Really? The ones you sent me. Yeah, the, the photos, the before and afters. Uh, yes. You know, the thing about, um, it may not come through too well, but they'll just be playing in the background. Yes. We can talk about them as we go through. I can pause on anyone if you want me to. The, the building of actions is not uh, about, um, just building a store of products that you don't use. Uh, we, when you build these, the, the process behind it is so that it is useful. So it's really nice. You know, I find photos. Um, I try to find them of all different, uh, calibers and exposures so that, even though they may not fit your photo, when you hit play, a, a few adjustments are, are there and, and it should work. Um, I don't go and edit my photos by hand every time. I use the same actions that I'm selling because in our industry, we are paid by the hour almost. You know, If we're spending too much time editing, we're making no money, we can't feed our family or even spend the time to do the photography because it takes it takes a lot to edit. You know, these, these things don't, it, even when you're doing weddings and babies, those photos don't, it's not always about exposure. It's about skin and, and um, even balancing skin tones. So, which is one of the ones we have up now, I believe is um, the skin one. And that's, you know, the, the, as you edit, if you do a lot of editing in either Lightroom, Photoshop or Photoshop act, uh, elements, you will end up creating shortcuts for yourself, creating your own little actions, your own presets, whatever it is. Um, so, you know, you're going to create some of your own and getting some like yours, Stacey, gets you that extra step mm -hmm. um, and helps you out with that. But one of the things I wonder, like with this one, so I understand how you're doing, you know, basically, not, not exactly. Yep. You do some of this stuff. But how, how do you have an action that does skin? It looks like it's softening the skin. 
Sure. So there's a lot of things in Elements or in Photoshop that allow us to create this. And um, it, it's a lot of the filters that are behind it. So these actions that create skin are um, a blur and a mask over them to uh, allow you to paint on the smoothness. But it's really the balance of the opacity of those. Um, also the balance of the toning that you do behind the scenes in the action, one of those layers to create or keep a peachy tone or a um, tan tone versus turning it yellow or orange. So a lot of times you'll have these skin actions that will be built to smooth the skin and then also to tone that as well. So the one that you're looking at there um, has multiple layers within it to help create that. I always try to remind people when you're using these that you keep them in a more natural state. Sometimes we see these skin actions um, and turn people uh, very plastic. So mm -hmm. keeping them down and using them for what you need is, is really the best bet there. And so this is, um, you're, you're not just pressing play and it runs all through it. You've got, you need to do some uh, that's what I was wondering. Uh, how does it know not to smooth out the eyes and the hair? So what it does is when you click play on that action, nothing happens. It comes up as a, here is what you do next. You run it. Of course, everything that needs to work is working in the background, but it tells you to get a paintbrush and a white paintbrush because everything is hidden being black on a layer mask. I'm not sure um, how familiar with layer masks, but those layer masks hide everything and right. you get a paintbrush to paint over the areas that you want to be smoothed. Okay. So here you see that someone painted all of the areas on the face uh, without covering the eyes, without covering jawline. You need to be very careful and staying away from the creases um, or you know corners or edges of a face or, or body. So it's kind of convenient that a lot of layers happen and you use the, uh, the, the like, um, paintbrushes, all the kind of tools that it asks you to use once you hit play. So it has so, kind of a tutorial to it. Um, Candice said out in chat, said, I am obsessed with Rock My Makeup. <laughs> rock My Makeup. So that's a great one. That set is, I swear, I tell my um, all my friends and fans on here, I wish I could come up with one that cleaned my house. But Rock My Makeup <laughs> will make a woman beautiful. Um, it is a set that covers the makeup so boudoir sessions wedding sessions it puts lip gloss on a woman um, I think you have one of the photos I sent you that shows the lip gloss really nice um, mm -hmm. you know mascara there are so many uh, features in the face that get lost whether it's due to overexposure or sunlight and you can kind of bring those back with this this set it's probably got about 20 different actions so now you're going to need to come up with a thinning action. I, you know, I do tutorials on teaching them how to do it. Yep, that's a pretty creative one, too, and that's your liquify tool. Yeah, yeah, I just there you go. That, that's just what I need. Then I really won't lose weight. I, I always well, we can't need... walk around with a liquify tool, Tim. Like, <laughs> oh, oh. Billion photos. The <laughs> problem is I'm on the other side of the camera anyway all the time, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Except when we're on here, right? Yes. yes. And I haven't set up my lighting. You guys look so. How is it that a photographer sitting here did not set up her lighting prior to it? I I, I should have perfect lighting, but it took us a while to figure it out. Also, <laughs> it did. And I was showing, you know, I, it's odd because I got four different monitors, and only two of them are um, calibrated. The other two on the broadcast server, and I don't care. So over there, it looks like it's horrible. Um, but it's odd. It's odd looking at all these different exposures, and I was showing. Uh, Stacy, before the show, what my lights really are like, and they're not nearly as impressive as you would think, but they get the job done. I got to tell you, they are clever, and in any uh, aspect of photography, it doesn't always go as beautifully planned as an umbrella, so that was genius. Well, the, the, you know, like anything in photography, what's outside the frame doesn't matter. It's only yeah, what's exactly inside the frame. Right. And I got to um, tell you, say, I'm going to give your trick away later because I know a photographer in a punch is going to grab a milk jug because that was genius. Yeah. So I'll, so I'll go ahead and give it. I think I've shown this before, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you now. It's basically little lights, LED lights from Lowe's. They're like nine bucks. It's on, it's on a stand or a clip. And it is shining its LED light through a milk jug. And that's <laughs> diffusing the light. <laughs> It's clever. In, in a bunch, you know. And it looks nice. And, and that was Kaylee. Uh, Kaylee right now has her video uh, muted. But Kaylee is, um, you know, we a while back had said anybody who's interested in 
maybe potentially co-hosting, uh, let me know and and you know we'll we'll try out. And what we're looking at is like tonight. Um, what's her name? Tim. What's what's her other guy lady's name? Well, from uh, you're gonna make me think about this from uh, two weeks. Our other co-host. What's her name? Oh, there it is. It's Kathleen. Yes, I almost forgot who she is. Uh, <laughs> she's still our co-host. Yeah. Yeah, Kathleen is out this week. Fine. No, no. She sent me a text this morning and said, hey, I'm not feeling well. I'm still up in Virginia. I'm not going to be able to make it to the show tonight. And I said, I, I know, Kathleen. <laughs> you, you told me. So she, she originally sent me a note said, I'm going to be out the 16th and the 23rd. Secretly, you guys don't know, but I shot her a text and said, I want to be the only blonde on this show. So <laughs> well, Whatever. So she told me she's going to be out the 16th and the 23rd. And I said, what's that? Uh, anyway, she said she's going to be out the 16th and the 23rd, and I said, oh, that's, that's, that's fine. Are you going to be out just those two days or all the days in between them? <laughs> and she, and she's, cause, cause the 16th and the 23rd are Mondays. They're not right. show, show days. She goes, no, no, I mean the days in between them. I said, oh, good. So you'll be back for Stacy's show on the 24th. Uh, no, I'm not going to be back to the 25th. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the 16th and the 23rd? So I don't, really the 30 something. Yeah, so I don't she know. She meant so, the weeks of the 16th and 23rd. I think that's what she meant. So um, I just like to pick on her when she's not here because, you know, that's the price when you get when you're not here. I mean, well, this rehab must here. be costing her. Yeah. But she, she plans to be back next week. She unfortunately had to miss last week and this week. Sorry, Stacy. But that's going to happen from time to time. We're going to have people who, you know, Tim is going to need to take a vacation. Kathleen's going to need to take a vacation every other week. Um, so we're looking for people who are interested in being co-host. And Kaylee mentioned she would be interested. I think, Stacy, you actually wouldn't, be, wouldn't mind doing it sometimes, too. Clearly, so. I have a mouth to jab, so... <laughs> I would be problem. more, but my daughter is like, meh, meh, meh. <laughs> and, and that's a struggle when you when you have um, distractions in the background. Tim has gotten much better at muting his mic while he's typing, because he does a lot of typing as as we're talking. And uh, if you listen to some of the earlier shows, you hear a lot of that typing. But he's gotten much better at. And it. I never even realized the keyboard was loud. <laughs> <laughs> Everything passes through. So, Stacy, you you're um, doing a lot of actions, and I got now the one up. Where is the the lip gloss one? I think you're talking about. Oh yeah, you know I don't have the screen up when we had all of that noise interference. I shut my screen down for the chat, but oh, okay. uh, the the lip gloss is an action that's pretty amazing, and it does a lot of things in the background to make that happen. It took me quite a long time to build, but I knew that there was going to be a way. You know, and once I get my mind to it, and someone said. Hey, I need lip gloss. This girl didn't bring any. Uh, I don't just want to smooth her lips. She had chapped lips. What do I do? So you know, this is the inspiration that I get. These photographers become my friends, and and they tell me these great things that they need, and and we do them. So um, I've been stumped, but I don't get stumped long, and I figure it out. So what what is this one called? Um, that's in the rock my makeup. Is that the lip gloss that you're selling? Yeah. It, so there's two types of lip gloss. There's a high shine and a uh, more of a low shine lip gloss okay. that they can choose from and play depending upon what they're doing. And these are really great, again, for boudoir and weddings, um, seniors. I use mine a lot for seniors. And um, so what is what is the mix now between the time you spend uh, foot, you know, doing photography? Because it seems like you can yeah. really get caught up in the, in the action and support. Because I I, one of the things you do is you don't just – you're not just selling the action and then walking away. You you actually have your own Facebook forum. You're active in that forum. You 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 um just like JPEG to Raw. You're doing a lot of giving back. I do, and it, I've learned through my career that commitment is the key to success. So um, delivering a product to somebody and walking away is never going to give me the word of mouth, even the same as photography. So when I decided to go forward with um, making the other part of my company rack my edits, I knew that I was going to spend a lot of upfront time with my clients, getting them to understand how to use the actions, even getting them how, uh, used to installing them. So I do spend probably about 90% of my time with Rock My Edits and Rock My Photography with photographers as my clients versus what I was doing with um, photography. So I'm balancing um, a wedding maybe once or twice a month now and not taking as many weekly shoots as I was before. But I find that you know as I progress through my career, 
it becomes more rewarding, whatever it is. So at the beginning, when I decided to just start a photography business, I, that's what I wanted to do, but it has grown. And um, it, it's like any photographer coming into a new niche. It's, uh, this is probably where I find myself most passionate. It, I've always been somebody in my uh, career to teach other people, whether I was heading up a graphic department. Now I'm kind of just working with these photographers and, and getting them where I wanted to be or, you know, it, it just is so much more rewarding. So probably about 90% of my time, I think I, I work a good 14 hours a day, at least. A lot of these people on here can tell you it, it doesn't matter if you check and uh, see if I'm on it at 9 a.m. or 2 a.m. I know, I've, got, I've seen you uh, <laughs> put something out at 2 a.m. You've also wrote a number of uh, articles for our site. Yes. Um, and I'm gonna try and pull that up now. Here, I look do at, so, right look at that, Tim, how I've done that. Are you getting a slick? Like Very a good. 3D, wow. Like a little 3D thing going on there. Nice. Yeah, really. <laughs> I can't so you, wait to watch back and see what you've got going. <laughs> the first one I think you wrote for me was uh, get out of, these might not be in the right order, but get out of auto mode. Yeah, so you call it something a lot nicer than the story is actually. Yes. Yours is get your, correct. get your blank out of auto. Uh, I, yeah. I need to keep the iTunes clean rating. So. Correct. <laughs> so this um, article was really important for me to write because I knew that so many times we get used to electronics doing things for us. And we always assume that our electronics know it the best. You know, they're, they're built by geniuses and, and we paid a ton of money for them to, they should just be able to work themselves. And that just isn't the case when you're trying to get artistic. So my uh, desire was to be able to help people pull back a little bit from the machine and start creating their own work, which, you know, I, I have seen a lot of our fans grow from the time I started that very first blog until now, and they all have this beautiful bokeh, and you can really tell their exposure is more beautiful, and their skin's creamier, so I hope that works. And, you know, um, JPEG Raw originally started off as something that we wanted to help the beginner photographer. Yes. We've gotten a little bit more advanced. You know, some of the actions uh, we're talking about, that's, you know, while uh, probably most of the people listening to this now know what actions are, know what all that is, there's a lot of people who are just getting into photo, getting into photography who mm -hmm. don't know, you know, an action. What do you mean? Um, who are probably not going to buy Photoshop, maybe Elements, but not fo right. full Photoshop. Or maybe maybe Lightroom. Lightroom's a good alternative too. It's gotten a lot cheaper. Yes. Um, so a lot of them start are starting off in auto mode and only doing point, you know uh, snapshots. Correct. And I think if if all you're wanting to do is snapshots, then auto That's mode beautiful. it's it's fine. Mm -hmm. But you gotta you understand your 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 learning curve is going much slower because the camera's doing everything for you. It is. Uh, if you want to move beyond snapshots and start taking photos. I think that's when you need to start getting out of auto mode um, mm -hmm. and going into to one of the modes. And manual mode sounds like the most intimidating mode. Yeah, but absolutely. In, in, in some way, depending on what you're shooting, if you're shooting mm -hmm. something in, in light that is changing rapidly, mm -hmm. then manual mode would be a challenge. Mm -hmm. But if you're shooting uh, in, where light is not changing rapidly, manual mode is not nearly as um, intimidating as you think. But your, your art, article here, uh, get out of auto mode mm -hmm. was not necessarily saying get into manual, right? Correct. It, it, it's really just um, al allowing yourself that control over the uh, settings that you have on your camera. It It is intimidating when you put that over into a manual or a priority mode, whatever it is, because the very first photograph that you take isn't perfect but it's not really supposed to be. There isn't a mathematical equation that's gonna quickly tell me what my camera needs to be in that uh, lighting situation. What I need to do is understand the three components that will give me a good exposure. So this article and the subsequent articles are really just to teach people not to be afraid of those three things. You know, it's the, the intimidation is um, gonna hold you back. So clearly you gotta just kind of jump in full force. And I always tell people, grab a coffee cup, be alone in a room. Nobody has to know that you're learning manual. Just play with those three settings and see what they do when you, when you move them. And um, I have so many people say, that's it. 
that was it. That's all I needed. I needed to not worry about a client being in the room, not worried about my husband or my daughter seeing me, not understand my camera. Just do it and do it alone. It's really the difference between um, putting it on there and fighting through the different exposures and, and feeling comfortable with what they do. Yeah, and you know, we all learn at different paces, and mm -hmm. at some point it clicks for you, and it's going to yes. click at different pace, yes. uh, places for different people. Um, so, you know, when I first met Stacy, you know, I think you, you gave me the, the auto mode, and I said, oh, that's, you know, that's nice of Stacy. Mm -hmm. And then quickly after that, you gave me another one, the Bare, oh, Naked, yeah. bare Naked Photographer. And when, yes. you, when I saw that, I go, okay, what's this one going to be about? <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> So it oh, is a, did I scare you, Mike? <laughs> that, you know, remember, we got to keep a clean rating yeah. on iTunes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Barry Kid Photographer is, is just simply about all of us being on spot. You know, yeah. we're, we're all showing each other what we have, and, and, and you just can't have fear. It's art. Yeah, so it's not about being it's not about being actually naked. No. Uh, but it's a good catchy title. And, and, you know, so <laughs> if, you, those. if you go to our website and you search for Stacy, um, just type in a little search thing, Stacy, you'll see and that's what I did here. Just hit Stacy. Oh, and if I spell your name right. I E. Then it will pull up all the articles written by Stacy. And you actually did a, a new one, uh, learning to shoot manual. Just put that one up. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, yes. So, Stacy, thank you so much for putting thank for you. doing all those articles. Uh, and you know, feel free to keep them coming. Thank <laughs> right. you. Yeah, we uh, write a lot of them, and it, it that we've come up with um, the website Rock My Photography because of that. Because people really love, and not just my writing, but we find other photographers who want to write. It, it sometimes it's easier to be able to come back to it later. So we have these great photographers who are writing these blog posts to tell us, the, you know, how to handle clients, how to um, get back into creative modes, and and how to shoot manual. So it's been a fun journey through this blogging. Yeah, and so you do a lot of that. One of the things we hope to do is that you know by by you doing that we have all your links and hopefully you yes. get some traffic from us to, over to you yeah um, so your website is rock my edits rock my edits is the action store and then the now I'm on your um, your regular site right I'm totally obsessed with her actions already oh I'm so excited <laughs> to hear that yeah Wait, and that that was Kaylee go ahead Kaylee uh, I believe hold on I can't exactly recall the name. I put her on the I, spot. I'm never good with names, ever. <laughs> Do you guys have a trick when you're out um, with your clients and you need to remember their names? I, I don't know how many of you ever do families, but that seems to be a tricky thing with me is so that while I'm shooting, I'm not calling little Joey little Stevie. So, you know, I kind of, <laughs> I run through it a hundred times while I'm driving to the session. Like, make sure you call them. Little Joey. So I, I thought you were, get wrong. I thought you were going to give us some great tip because I'm horrible with names. I, yeah, I, I don't. Write it on your hand. Write it on your hand. Hold on, let me see. You are. Yes. <laughs> I always make sure that I ask my client to name, and I hopefully they're sending it to me an email or a text. The names of everybody that's going to be in the shoot and their age, so that if they have two boys i can kind of you know get to memorize before i get there who's going to be the younger one but i have walked away from a shoot saying did i call that child david his name is not david <laughs> <laughs> yeah you remember well, you responded that. the whole time you remember later kind of on crazy. yeah <laughs> i think i started using pet names like oh, there you and go. stuff like that so that i never have to remember well how about if you just call the the, the boys hey buddy Hey, buddy. <laughs> but then what do you do when there's the second one? And now they're looking like, I, I thought I was buddy. You said I was buddy. No, it's a generic, buddy it's a, <laughs> it's a generic term. It, it fits for everybody. Uh, hey, buddy. And you just point to him. <laughs> Come here. And, and somebody said buddy, too. Um, so, hey, how about we, because we're at already 914. Why don't we go ah. ahead and open it up a little bit for if there's any questions out in chat? Because I uh, there may have been some questions. I Sorry if I missed some of your questions. I know somebody was trying to come through an iPhone, and I believe iPhone requires um, HTML5 and or an app, and this is through Justin TV, and I don't know if there is one. but So you may not be able to get audio, video through Justin TV. 
I um, have never been able to uh, stream through the iPad or anything. So. And let me. I know. Uh, I think Stacy is. I know uh, I Kathleen is, and I, and I know Kaylee is. All um, iPhone, I you know, Apple fans. Yep. But I will be right up front and tell you that is an Apple problem. Oh, yeah. no, it is. It is. <laughs> but I love my Apple. I have to tell you, I, I, I love my Apple. It well, made no, it a graphic designer in me. What, what, you know, what happens is Apple, try, Apple pushes things forward on some things, yeah. and they're, they're, they're ahead of the time. You know, they didn't put Flash yeah. in, their, in their players and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so until things, if they do, until things move to their way of doing it, um, you're just out of luck on some of those things. You know, that reminds me just so, because I know you have a ton of listeners. I would love to tell people this. I, and I have just very first time come across it. Apple store allows people to purchase um, Photoshop elements. You cannot add actions to their version of Photoshop elements. Oh, I did not know wow. that. Yes. So I had a guy come on and he says, no, I, my folder's not there. No, your folder's there. I promise you, your <laughs> folder is there. No, it's not there. So I always make sure that I jump on with them and take a look at their computer. And lo and behold, the folder wasn't there. He had purchased it from Apple through the Apple Store, and they do not allow you to install. Yeah. Extra wow. stuff. Well, you know, just like we showed the Drobo earlier. Well, that's, that's not a good. That's, that is not a good example. The Drobo is kind of flexible. Yes. But the the i the a Apple everything really. Uh, beautiful hardware. It mm -hmm. works really well, but you have to live within their confines. It's a closed yeah. system because they want to protect it. Right. Yep. And as, as long as you're willing to live within their confines and it works for you, it's a beautiful system. Um, so, you know, well, Jim is pointing out in there that I you, should, you could watch us over the YouTube over an iPhone or yeah. an iPad. Good, good oh. point. So, uh, if, if the lady who or person who's having trouble with the iPhone, one of the things you can do is we are streaming live to YouTube. You do miss the chat here if you're watching there. I the, think the, that they tried though and oh, okay. they couldn't get it working. So the, the chat does not carry over um, when you do that. Jim's That's checking the, it on his phone now. I checked it on mine. It Nothing. Can't see it. Nope. It lets it gives mm. me an error. It says this channel is not live. Only live streams and mobile compatible video clips appear. On mobile devices. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but anyway, we are streaming live to YouTube. You can watch it later on YouTube if you're missing it here. The other thing with YouTube is that, that uh, how we showed the photos earlier mm -hmm. is it's only showing you the hangout, so right. it's not showing you all those things. So you miss that. Yeah. You missed the you missed the great chat. You also missed the uh, the photos and everything. So all that being said, I wonder if I miss somebody asking questions. YouTube isn't working. I don't think so. I've tried to keep up with the questions, but it's mostly praise. Okay. So here's a question for you, <laughs> Stacy. Uh, when you yes. talk about getting new clients, so, you know, and I imagine she's talking more on the photography business side. Yeah. It is, and you've done a great job of marketing, always out there pushing and, and moving forward. So tell us, you know, how are you, how do you now or even in the past, Get, build your client list from a, as a photographer. Marketing is such a huge thing, and clearly we know that word of mouth is going to um, excel. Uh, so obviously making your clients happy and, and keeping them happy is, is an important one. But I also like to um, engage my clients with my blog so that they feel like they have a feature on my blog. So if it's a wedding, for instance, I put my bride's photos up. I always give her a little bit of an interview because, hey, she's going to want her family to see those questions of how did you feel on this special day, you know, or what would you tell brides? And she's going to push my link to Facebook or any other social media site. So it's really important to engage with your clients and not just photograph them, take the money and leave. It's really, how do I keep them coming back? Is it in six months revisiting their photos and putting a new one on the blog and sending them a message? Um, another one is to not always, as you start building this client base, not always 
making posts about selling something. So instead of constantly sending out a Facebook post that says, hey, I'm having many sessions or, oh, I'm, you know, uh, um, need somebody for this weekend because somebody canceled, engage your client, give them pointers, you know, things that will let them know. You probably have a lot of brides on your social media sites. So give them just a bride tip and engage them in, uh, in all the things that concern them and they're going to want to read and they're going to want to share your links. Yeah, because one of the things is that you get that first client or mm -hmm. you put up their photos on your site, on on Facebook, wherever mm -hmm. you're going to put them up, you get them to share them. You're almost getting them to help you find your next client. You really are. And I found that one of the most beautiful things is interviewing my clients after I um, photograph them. So if I were to have a senior uh, and do a session with a senior, after I took her photos and she got those five uh, sneak peeks, I would, I would send her an email or a text with three or four different questions. How was your site? What was, or how was your session? What was your most exciting part of the day? What do you want to do when you graduate? What is she going to do? Share this with her friends and family because she wants her friends and family to hear what she said or, oh, I just got interviewed. This is very exciting. Um, yeah. You know, how many studio places interview their clients after they take a photo? So it helps sharing. Yeah, so in that, you know, hopefully they share it. So one of those other seniors see it or another bride if you're doing a wedding. Yep. And they, they see that and go, ah, oh, I want to contact Stacy and see if she'll do me. Yeah. And then it starts to build on itself. I imagine at first it's a little slow. And, and, and it always takes work um, because it's one of those things that once you start, once you start to back off, it won't keep going forever. You got to keep moving it and keep doing it. Correct. Um, and as somebody out there said, you know, it, it is a little intimidating and um, to get out there. But where, where do you? Is there blog sites that may be easier to set up and get running? Right um, off the bat. Yeah, I, you know, there are so many resources that we have on the internet these days that do not cost an arm and a leg to do. Your very first blog uh, site, and I always recommend for photographers a blog site because you have the ability to constantly be updating it, which really helps you in the Google search engines. Um, you can start with a free blog. There's um, WordPress or blogger.com that allows you to use really great free themes and get yourself out there and, and start blogging and start getting your clients to share your links. It's a great way to get started. Once you get start building an audience, you probably ought to think about moving to your own yep. host so you have more control over it. Absolutely. But they do a great job, you know, and it kind of allows people to practice the activity mm -hmm. of blogging and why do I want to blog and what really is relevant to blogging and how often should I share it. So I always suggest to people to get out there and do it. Um, but the important thing with marketing that it, it, I've learned in my in this field or in this industry is not to give up. If you put an ad out, if you're using Facebook AdWords and the first week you didn't get a lot, it doesn't mean quit. Don't put all of your pennies in multiple baskets. Put them all into two or three and see and give it time and, and repetitiveness because what happens in one month, um, maybe nothing, but now as you've been shown um, on these sites over and over and over again, you may the second month get great activity. So don't give up in marketing. That's that's true. You know, no matter what happens, you'll see fluctuations. Yeah. You know, if you use Google, uh, what is it? Google uh, Analytics, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and or okay. Analytics where you're watching yep. the, your yes. tra your traffic. You know, you'll think you did the greatest blog post ever. You'll look at it and just won't. It won't get anywhere. And it could be a really good blog post. Sure. Just lined up to where people did not see it. Correct. Did not go into it, or just for whatever reason didn't take off. Yep. And then one that you think did nothing is nothing. Mm -hmm. Bam takes off, so you know just you just keep pushing it, just keep doing it. I think a Facebook page is probably a good I think idea too, oh, getting people yep. to like it. And this Google Plus now, yes, it's like yeah. a big kid Facebook. I like it, it. it, it is. Uh, the thing with Facebook I found is is if we start post, if I, and we I mean me, if mm -hmm. I put posts on the on the page, for about every post I put, I lose one fan. Sure, I but think then, that number is is funny. But then, but then I gain two or three later on. So it's you can't get you can't, don't dwell on the losing. It's very easy to dwell on the losing when you only have fifty. It is. And but once you're up there, yes, yes it just is. Keep pushing forward. Now I know I missed um, some questions there. Let's see. How does blogging move you up in a search in? Uh, um, that's a that question is really great because so many people will put up a website. 
get it all done, paid lots of money, thousands of dollars for somebody to design it and put all of this content into it. And then it never updates itself because you're probably not a web designer. So with blogging, what you're doing is constantly adding new terms, what new words that are critical to your keyword or your, your clientele. And by updating a website, you're, the search engines um, value your site more. So they say that blogging is the better choice. You're using words repetitively, hopefully smartly, and um, you're, you're saying things about photography that make you relevant. And Google says, oh, she really is a photography site. Okay, she comes right. up in the site. So. And, and somebody mentioned SEO out in chat, and that's basically yeah. what you're talking about there is, is SEO. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, did I lose it? No. I'll go back to to that. You know, one, so one of the things is when you're when you're doing a a post like this one where Stacy did learn and shoot manual, uh, you find a keyword that's going to be both in the title, in the in you know the blog itself. Yep. Um, and if you ever seen on Google where you have the title, it would say learning to shoot manual, and then underneath that on Google search, it has a little bit of text, maybe like two sentences. Mm -hmm. You want the the keyword in that. Um, mm -hmm. And that thing too. All that's part of the SEO. There's a lot of things you can do in SEO. SEO meaning search engine op optimization, and that's kind. Of, we don't really know how Google does it, right? But we have a decent idea, and we know uh, that it has to do with relevance. Yeah, and so clearly, doing blog posts about photography are going to help. If you were talking about cooking, it might not be as relevant. So. True. And and like you said, you got to keep at it because if you do one post, mm -hmm. keep in mind there's lots of people doing posts. Yeah. So um, with with all that, you know, all that we're doing, it's it's hard. If you want to get on page one of Google search, that is extremely difficult. And, it, you know, I found this deranged so true. We were putting our house up for sale and the realtor comes over and he introduces himself to my husband. He says, ah, your wife must be a photographer. And my husband says, how'd you know? And he says, I put in your name and it was photographer galore. Exactly, because I constantly, constantly am blogging. And um, I've become relevant in my name. How many Stacey Jeff Jensen's are there? There's tons. But because I'm always doing it, I have come up to the top of the search engine for that name. And my photography business does. So believe in it and do it and practice it. And you too will see that that marketing um, pays off. Oh, here's a great question. Um, what about being confident during your shoot? So, you know, I think that's important that you look like you know what you're doing. It's probably important you know what you're doing, but also that you look yeah, like you know what you're doing. It is, and it's it starts before you ever um, meet your client in person. It really starts with that very first communication. When you come into a conversation with your client, whether it's email or um, on the phone, you really have to come off as being proud of what you do. If at any moment you're shaky or um, not sure or apologizing, even discrediting yourself, well, I don't really handle, you're going to put doubt into their mind. So being proud of what you do, you're already starting this business, you're already an entrepreneur, you really have to go into it with value and, and valuing what you're going for. So it, it, it's kind of a, just a situation where you gotta have a, the talk with yourself, of, hey, the next, the next client I speak to, I'm going to blow her socks off. All right, I'm going to say something that's going to make me sound like an idiot, but it's I can do it because Kathleen's not here, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I I do watch American Idol every once in a while, sure. and I learned a lesson from Paula Abdul. <laughs> this is where it makes me sound like an idiot. Um, and it was a singer who got up on stage, and as they're singing, they messed up, mm -hmm. and they stopped and apologized, yep. and it really threw them off, and Paula said, um, don't apologize. Just keep you know, just keep going. Everybody don't. messes up. The difference in between a professional and an amateur is professional doesn't stop and draw attention to the mistake. They just keep going. That's correct. Such as when I have my client sitting in front of me and I'm having an issue with my exposure because of light. I don't say, hold on. Ugh, I can't get my exposure right. I say, oh, hold on. I'm just getting the perfect skin tone on you. So it's really about devising the, the correct communication. Um, you, you can know that you're having an issue without your client understanding that you have an issue. Um, in 
stop second guessing yourself. You're taking photos of their family and they're treasuring it. So what you may be focused on as an error to them just won't be, you know, it's, yeah. it's not well, true. That's easier said than done. You know, after you get, after you get some experience on your belt, mm -hmm. that'll, it'll mm -hmm. come natural. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of experience, um, when you first got started, did you do any free sessions? Absolutely. Like so the, it's very important, clearly, for us to learn our camera and what we love to do and the niche that we're going to do it in. So yes, you you got to get out there and, and annoy every family member and every friend that you have. Just bug them and carry your camera around because um, situations are what we learn from. Stacy, how long does it take for you to edit a session? Um, I would say it's probably, if it were a senior and I'm editing about 40 photos, I'm guessing that it's going to take me about 40 minutes. I like to keep my photos at um, a minute or under. A minute? Wow. A minute or under. But again, I'm using actions. I already know I've got into a phase. I go through these um like what at some point I may only use this one action because it's just who I am at that time. I know I'm going to use this action. So all I have to do is change the opacity of it on every single photo, touch up a little bit of skin. I'm in and I'm out. I've been doing it a long time. So I know that a minute's probably not natural. I think about three minutes is, is something that um, it is a normal amount of time per photo, but I want to make sure that I make the most money off of my session. So yes, getting in there and learning editing and feeling comfortable with it is a key because that's really where you're going to spend the most time. You've got in, you're already paid for it. Who wants to edit later? Uh, but, but if you can do this and learn how to optimize your time, you can really make a living for yourself where uh, you can spend balance it with family and um, even take on more clients. But yeah, I'm about a minute per photo. Basically, I shoot in raw. I try to get my exposure correct in camera so that I'm not focusing on that all of the time. I, I get in there and um, I, I go through, adjust my raw if I need to, apply my actions for the entire session because I do like to ensure my client has the same look and feel through their um, house if they're putting them in frames. So. Yeah, that, that, I, I am nowhere near a minute. I'd have to like, I'd, I'd have to have an intravenous needle, or however you say that word, uh, of crap flowing right into my veins to get down to a minute of peace. But, you know, I guess it probably depends on what are you doing? Are you editing every single photo a different way? I am. Okay, that's that's your kicker right there. So yeah. if you're if you're editing photos, you need to. Uh, what I always suggest is that you open up the very first photo in that session and decide the look and the feel. Pick what your black and whites are going to look like, the tone of your black and white, and pick what your colors are going to look like. Once you have that and you've wrote down um, a, a written down a, a recipe for it, whatever actions or adjustments, maybe you're making hand adjustments. Then throughout this session, the others will just come and go quickly, unless there's major fixes. And I guess it's important to get it as close to right in camera as possible. In camera, 100%. Yeah. Before you're applying actions, you really should go ahead and get a, a strong exposure base. Yeah, Making okay. Sure. I'm sure I missed some more. So if Here's I missed... A, if, a question ahead, from the, uh, the chat. How do you get your clients to relax and go into a natural fill so you get some awesome shots. You know, the, the, when I meet my clients, so we're just all getting out of the car together. I go up in a very non-formal way. My contracts are already signed. My deposits are already delivered. Um, I go into this as a, I'm so excited to meet you. If it's a, if there's children, the first thing I do is go straight to the children. I ask the parents, hey, can I take two or three minutes with your child? And we're going to laugh and I'm going to ask what they want to do. I'm, I'm going to maybe make a couple jokes to that child that I can use later later on during the session. So if you know I'm alone with the seven-year-old Timmy, I ask him if he's got a girlfriend during our three minutes. Um, of course, he is just appalled that I could ever ask him if he has a girlfriend, but later, on, yeah. but later on during the family session, all I have to do is barely mention, oh, did you hear Timmy had a boy or girlfriend? And um, that's it. They, they are all giggles and laughs. I like to let mom and dad know this is, we're free spirited here. I want to capture who you really are. Please don't um, stare into my camera and be scared. Kind of just interact. So uh, it's a lot of jokes. If I have to, you know, shake my tail feathers to make everybody laugh, I'll do it. 
Do you, uh, you, you know, one of the things, the, the ladies from, uh, oh, I can't remember what site they were, but what they did was they put a Pez dispenser on the hot shoe of their Flash. Nice. So they had, I think they had to cut a little bit of the legs off, and they stuck the Pez dispenser on the hot shoe of their Flash. Yes. And then that was something to get the kids' attention. Here is a great tip for smaller children. If you want a smaller child to look into your camera and really give that beautiful um, look of, of just complete amusement, you ask them to count the circles in your lens. Well, clearly you don't have any circles in your lens, but you are going to get the attention of a child. Even if they can't count, they're going to be focused on staring directly into that lens and really giving you a hmm look. That turns out to be really pretty. Um, so I use that one quite Often. Huh, that's a neat trick. Yep. Uh, now, do you do anything special for white balancing? Anything like an Expo disc or? I, I have the Expo disc. Um, sadly enough, I don't use it as often as I should. I think my eyeball is the perfect white balance, which it's not. But when I'm, you know, when I'm in that moment and I am shooting, I would say I would, I'm extremely passionate. And a lot of times gadgets will get in my way. I kind of, I'm, I'm just seat of my pants. So I have the expo and if I'm doing a wedding and it's that ceremony time, yes, that's appropriate. If you know, I'm out and I'm trying to uh, capture a family, I just watch the back of my camera closely. I know how I want the feel of my photo to start out with. So I just- I'm trying to get them to come on the show, the expo desk people. Uh, but working with a company to come on the show just takes forever. Well, they want you to be um, already up there, and you know the thing is with, yeah. with what you're doing, it's so amazing because you're bring, bringing tons of photographers into this industry and learning. So that you'd be a perfect. Yeah, I'm, I, we probably have sold a few uh, of their Expo Desk forum by you know talking about it because you have one, Kathleen has one. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to buy buy one soon. I, I think that I've done so well with Amazon and they don't even know me. I push people over to Amazon for different things. I'm thinking, aren't they wondering what this site is? Rock my photography that keeps sending everybody over there. But yeah. Oh, see, so, okay. So now I'm going to have to uh, do our thing too here too. You're going to have to pimp a little, right? Mike? <laughs> I'm going to have to pimp a little. So Stacy, you have an uh, uh, Amazon link on your site that you people can click on and an affiliate link. Uh, but it's not even an affiliate. Unfortunately, I'm losing money by not because it's just me babbling well, about a product that I love. Well, then there you go. So, yeah. you know, we do have an affiliate link. Nice. So if you want, if you're going to buy something that Stacy mentions and she doesn't have a, the thing on there yet, yep. um, come to our site and click on any of the Amazon links. It will take you there and you can buy whatever you want to buy. That's a great thing to have. And we, we use all the funds. Um, we haven't actually got any funds yet, but when we get the funds. <laughs> One day when you do. When we do, to, to uh, give gifts away. We won't yeah. always have somebody like Drobo giving us one to give mm -hmm. away. Those are hard to come by. Um, okay, Stacy. so we're getting, let's go ahead now and we, let's pick, Yay. we will pick the first number. So let me, let me try and Looks do like it. we have 40 users in. Yes. So pick a number between one and 40. Okay. We're going to go with six. Okay, six is C L Mudy, M O U D Y. Yay! Congratulations. That's exciting. I can't see. Are you still guy. out there? Uh, so we have got two of them. We're gonna do. That's the first one. Oh, she's yeah, out there. She responded. Yay! One hundred and fifty dollars. And that's the great thing about this gift certificate is there's business tools too. So you know, if they if they aren't into actions or they like it, editing on their own, there's also really good stuff on the business side. Uh, yeah, so uh, how can they, what do they need to do to they just contact you? Um, yeah, go ahead and email me at info at stacyjensenphotography.com and I'll send them over the gift card. Okay, very good. So that's the first one. Um, and hey, everybody, I, I think I started to hang out before you guys, but and Stacy, you haven't, and Kaylee, you haven't been in one long enough to know this, but it'll eventually ask you, are you still there? Okay. So I just got the warning, are you still there? It'll, oh, pop, up, okay. it'll pop up on your Hangout screen. Mm -hmm. And if you don't click it within a minute, it kicks you out. Okay, thank so just, you. Just be looking for that. All right, so um, let's go. How about we pick the second one? And now I think these names are in alphabetical order. So let's you <laughs> that in mind when picking your next number. So All right, I'm going to go 33, as that's how old I am. 33. So we have four more. Oh, and I made you go down to the bottom of counting. I'm not counting backwards very well. So let's <laughs> see, one, two. We're up to 41 people, Mike, so you have to go back one further. All 
All right, Samantha. Oh, Samantha. Beauty champ. Be beauty champ. Congratulations, Samantha. I hope I didn't say that wrong. Are you still out there? I'm just glad that you're reading the names, not me. <laughs> I'm horrible with names. There's one I guess we had I pronounced wrong each time. Mm -hmm. Samantha, you, hopefully you're still out there. If not, we've got to give it away to somebody else. Oh, oh she's, she's there. She, oh, my she's God. There. Oh, my God. Good. Congratulations, <laughs> Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, like, like Stacy just said a minute ago, email Stacy. And yes, she will. StacyJensenPhotography.com. Yeah, and and Stacy, you know, go there and look. And if you didn't win tonight, go to the Stacy site and look. She has a number of actions, and I'm sure you're still developing some others too, right? I do. So I'm constantly, you know, we I have some great fans that that are always asking for a different look, and so it's forever building. I think we have about 500. It's more than 500 now, but 500 actions were the last count. 500 actually 500 yeah wow. so we have uh, and somewhere in the range of maybe 20 sets and and so yeah I, I i must not have seen them all that's just a ton oh i got my my am oh, I you still there? there mine doesn't make noise yeah no? that must, be must be an apple thing mine just doesn't make noise it's, uh, see? if i had minimized it i would just miss it <laughs> Um, so if you didn't win tonight, that's you know that that's fine. You can still go to Stacy's site and and buy some reactions. Stacy was also kind enough to do an exclusive thing to people in our Facebook group, yeah. where she gave away um, uh, some actions or an action. I don't remember what it a was. Set. Mm -hmm. A set, a mini, action, set. A mini set mm -hmm. to to people in our Facebook group. That's expired, but Stacy mm -hmm. was did that just for the Actually, group. Actually, just I I haven't had time to pull it. So if you're on here right now, hurry up and grab it. Oh yeah. I'll keep it one. I'll keep it just a little bit longer. Yeah, I haven't gotten to it yet to expire oh, it. Okay, so uh, how about will you leave it open for another day? I will. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> so. I will. If if you um, haven't got that yet and you and you want it, you know, go to our Facebook group. If you're not a member, you know, join the group. I will check it after the show and add you. Mm -hmm. I, it's hard for me to do during the show, and then you can can get that. Stacy, where else can they find you? Um, if they want to, you know, if you didn't win tonight, but you want to find you, follow you. Absolutely. You know. So I'm on Facebook and Twitter as Rock My Edits. Um, we have the store site, which is rockmyedits.com. And um, one of our favorites, which is Rock My Photography. It's a great place, um, free source for photographers to learn and to read fun stuff and, and reviews and products. So Very good. Um, I don't know if I'm following you on Twitter. I guess I need to do that. Oh, yes. I think, well... I think you might be. Okay. Yeah. I, think I, I remember I, one of our one of our stories. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kaylee, thank you for joining us tonight. I'm sorry that you your video we couldn't do video with you tonight. Uh, next time for sure. Actually, <laughs> I was really running late. I didn't get on until I saw Stacy's uh, post something, and it went to my phone and ding, and I was like, wait, it's almost. Like, oh my goodness. Oh, so you had the. Oopsie that I had in my dream last night because I dreamt I slept through this entire thing. Yeah. I was so, I woke up in such a panic. Oh, how could I have done it? It must be a blonde thing because, you know, it Kathleen is. actually did miss a show. Yeah, she slept <laughs> through it. Did she sleep through it? No, she, she we started a show and I was um, like, I guess Kathleen's coming in a minute. And she wasn't there. So I texted her and said, hey, you come, are you coming? Yeah. And she goes, to what? <laughs> and, and I said, "This is like show thirty-five. It's not. It's like yeah. she's been around for a while." You know. And I, I yeah. said, um, "It's Tuesday night, and we're doing a show. Remember?" <laughs> and she goes, "Oh my god! Oh my god! My I forgot." I bet and, you, if it would have been about Jimmy Choose, she would have yeah. never forgot. Now the response <laughs> was, "Oh my god! Oh my god! I forgot." Now from that answer, are you thinking I'm on my way? Because <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah, sure. I'm on my way. So about fifteen minutes later, still no Kathleen. I text her, "Well." <laughs> well what <laughs> and she goes oh no i'm not coming <laughs> it's between the 16th and 23rd right oh, it was available so that's the punishment you get kathleen for not being here i get to make fun of you <laughs> um so uh next next week we have a husband and wife photography team we have uh, i guess kathleen back and i think we have scott green who gave us this contact coming on as a special co-host to help us interview them nice. um so if you you know come and watch us next week the week after that 
we had the president of Shoot.Edit. Have you heard of them, Stacey? I have, and, and I've and been Kayla? on, and isn't it amazing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're amazing. And to get the president of the company to come on the show, yes. that's amazing, too. Um, and then the week after that, August 14th, is when we're doing the the show where we're going to have Jim, the guy who was on here earlier, Jim Collison. Yes. His entire, him and his two co-hosts are going to come on our show. And I think we're going to talk photography on our show with him. Uh, going back to the beginners, and then the, that, and that'll be the last night you have to sign up for the Drobo giveaway. Then that Thursday, the three of us are going to go on to his show and talk tech as it relates to a photographer. Uh, and then that will be That's where we'll fun. do the live drawing that night, August sixteenth. Yeah. So, Stacy, Stacy, do you have anything big coming up? Um, I don't know. When I'm kind of taking it slow, I have a few weddings, so I think I'm going to focus on some photography for a little bit, which will be a nice change. Well, weddings are big. I, yeah. I would, for me, I would never do a wedding. Kaylee, do you do, do, you do weddings? What no. do you, What do you do? Um, I do more newborns and families. Okay. Yeah. 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 All and of I those are... took quite a, a break here. Um, with the move, I've been debating whether I should go back because it was, it's kind of scary going to a new place and deciding, you know, all new clientele. Mm -hmm. Well, Kaylee, so you don't know, moved from Germany back to the United States. Her husband's in the military and um, yep. moved back. So that is a huge move. And Kaylee, we're, we're glad that you're starting to get settled in and hopefully get you, get you more involved. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So thank you for coming out tonight, Tim. Glad to see you back and sorry glad about your, sorry about your news last week. Um, you know, we, a lot of the people out in the group were sending you well wishes, um, Thank you. And, and, you know, sorry for your loss, especially at a time when it's such a happy time in your, in your life, when you had just had your baby born. Your pretty baby. Oh, she's my, uh, my little sweetheart. Yeah. She's gorgeous. All right. So that, uh, you know, if you, I have some closing notes here, I always forget to read. <laughs> um, don't forget to sign up for the Drobo giveaway. If you didn't win tonight for Stacy, go to her site and look at some of her actions. She has a lot there. You said oh, 500 of them, Over and I'm sure you'll, I'm sure you'll find something there you like. Uh, very we are affordable. very affordable it, and very affordable. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, for, um, The show is recorded. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, um, which is audio only, YouTube, any one of the podcast catchers you get. I get one on my phone. Uh, you go to iTunes if and you leave a comment on iTunes. It helps us. Uh, rise in the stats oh, nice. um, and subscribing to the show there helps us uh, rise in the chats and the stats too. We're also on Facebook with a page and a group. The group has been growing like crazy, Tim. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it lately, Tim. We're over 300 and something. 325 um, right now. And we're also on, we're also on Twitter. And then I mentioned the Amazon link and that's, that's about it. So we'll be back, back next week. And thank you thank all for you, coming Mike, out. Thank you, Mike, so chat. much. Thanks for giving yeah. my fans such a great resource. Yeah. You guys do an amazing job here. Oh, and if you didn't get your question answered, thank you, Stacy. If we didn't get your answer, uh, um, answer. If you didn't get your question <laughs> answered here, Stacy is very active on Facebook, and mm -hmm. I'm sure she'll be more than willing to interact with you there. So go out and find her there. Uh, with that, thank you. Good night, good night everybody. Good night. Bye. 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 Thank you.